everyone. Before we uh, start the open source session portion of our meeting, we have a public hearing uh, for the optional day school program, or school day program. Uh, Dr. Charles Fruget, I believe, will be speaking on this. Oh, there he is. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, um, this is, will be uh, the third time that we're applying for optional flexible school day program. This is a, a, a program through the Commission of Education that allows us to um, turn in attendance uh, for average daily attendance um, for students in an alternative <coughs> or outside regular school day program. It's, it's um, available or, or students are eligible if they're considered at risk but can be included drop in that school. We're required to hold a public hearing and then uh, see board of school and advice. Okay. Yes. Sorry, it was, it was buzzing, so I didn't want to you know, pierce anybody's eardrums. Do I need to repeat anything? Okay. Uh, so again, the optional flexible school day program requires us to um, hold a public hearing, provide information, and a report on the performance of the OFSD program in the past year, uh, and then seek board approval. Uh, so this is the, the, uh, the, um, the open uh, part of that presentation. And what I'm going to do is go through some information uh, that's on the PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to go fairly quickly, but please stop and give you questions. Uh, main components um, uh, of the, the night school program are the dropout recovery program, which is currently funded by a uh, Texas Education Agency grant. That allows us to uh, use some funding to provide programs for uh, dropout students uh, to help them uh, pass tax, um, recoup credits, and ultimately graduate and hopefully go on to uh, post-secondary education. Um, we received news in the past week that we've been given a, a no-cost extension for the dropout grant, which means that the portion of that grant that's funded by the state for the base grant, about $75,000, and then the additional performance incentives where we actually earn income for the program by graduating students, by having students pass tax, by having students move forward at grade level, we can continue to draw on those monies through June 2012. So it's called a no-cost extension because they didn't really give us any more money, but we can continue to use that, that income and earning performance reports. Uh, we get about $1,000 every time a student graduates from the dropout program, and about $250 every time a student moves up a grade level or passes one of the, the grade level tax. So that's good news for us. Um, sorry, could you go back, Chris? The optional flexible school day program, of course, is the component for at-risk students. We also have an accelerated component where students from the regular high schools can come and um, uh, participate in accelerated classes. That's located at the Louisville Learning Center, Monday through Thursday, 4, uh, 4 10 to 50 p.m. Uh, we offer core and elective courses depending on the student needs. Um, it's the same curriculum as the high schools, although it's accelerated. We have about a four and a half week session so the students can dramatically accelerate those, uh, those course credits. Components are students in 9th and 12th grade. Or, uh, students that are 9th and 12th grade, 9th through 12th grade are at risk. Um, we get the, the ADA funding. Um, has to be taught by highly qualified teachers. Attendance is recorded or reported through separate means codes. And students still have to take um, the state test in order to graduate and, and pass those tests. These are the objectives we set for um, this year, for the 2010-11 school year. Uh, 100, uh, at least 100 at-risk 9th through 12th grade students will participate. Um, at least 300 course credits uh, accumulated and at least 30 students uh, are going to complete graduation requirements. Um, as I said before, we're offering credit recovery, credit acquisition, tax assistance, dual enrollment for students. Uh, we've worked with um, uh, um, NCTC uh, on that. Uh, we use a flexible schedule so the students that have other responsibilities can still go through and complete the program. Next slide. Uh, the program includes uh, individual tutoring, access to a counselor, um, case management, so the services referrals to outside services. 
This is the outcomes uh, to date, um, or as of last week uh, for the program. Um, we've served 499 students. You might recall that the, the goal was to, to serve 100, so we've well exceeded that, that goal. 82 dropout, 232 at risk, and 185 accelerated. I'm not going to try and read those out loud, but yes. Uh, what some of the course enrollments were this year, just uh, for your information. Next slide. Uh, number of credits, 300 uh, credits earned by dropout students, 371 by at-risk students, and 266 by accelerated students for a total of 937 credits. Our goal was 300, so again, we far exceeded that, that, uh, that objective. Uh, number of students graduating, 17 dropouts graduated as of the date that, that uh, I completed this report, 27 at-risk students and 25 accelerated for 69 graduates. Again, our goal was 30, so we have exceeded that goal too. We had nine dropouts enrolling solely due to tax failure. Um, a lot of those subsequently passed. Twenty-one dropout students um, due to uh, uh, credit uh, uh, due to, uh, receiving credits were be uh, were able to be promoted to the next grade level. That then includes the twelfth grade. We did have some attrition. Um, we had twenty-nine students or dropout students enrolled and uh, left prior to graduating. That's about a thirty-five percent attrition rate. Right? That's also students that have success, not successfully completed programs before. We'd like that to be zero. Uh, this is just some of the various social service referrals that, that have been made and in contacts as part of the program. Uh, we have a strong case management approach to provide a lot of support for those students. And that's my presentation. I'm open for questions from the board or the, or the public. This is a public hearing, so if there are any questions from the board or from the public, please feel free to approach the microphone, but we'll take questions from the board first. Ms. Latham? Yes, my question is, what are the goals for next year? The goals that were in your presentation, that was the goals for last year, correct? Yes. So I was just curious, if, if our goal was to serve 100 and we actually served 499, what is our goal for next year? Uh, I just happen to have that. And the application that we will be turning in after this meeting, provided that the board approves it, approves it does have objectives for the 2011-12 school year. Those objectives are to um, for uh, 300, 200 students to, to participate, uh, 400 course credits to be accumulated, and for 50 eligible at-risk students to, to um, complete graduation requirements. Would it not make sense to raise our, our goal above 200 if we already served 499, or is it just a flexible number every year? Well, we increased the objectives over last year's objectives. Um, quite honestly, I think we didn't want to over-project, and there, there's really no, no, uh, no gain for projecting a, a yet higher number. Um, the general thinking, I think, is if we exceed the objectives, we're good. If we go below the objectives, we're not doing something right. You said we're funded through June 2012, is that correct? Yes. And, and what are the chances of that funding continuing after that? Honestly, I don't know. There was some talk that they might be able to provide some additional uh, performance incentive funds, um, but that's, uh, I haven't seen anything on it since they indicated they were trying to do that. So my hope is they would you know, come up with some additional funds. I think it, it's a very cost-effective program. It, it helps some students that really do need the help. It certainly saves society um, uh, some money because those students can go on to more productive lives and careers as a result. Well, um, we ran some uh, some numbers through the technology department and um, uh, totaled the, uh, the the number of hours that were reported through PEANS uh, so far this year. Um, so I can tell you about what the OFSDP has earned us so far. Uh, I should uh, 
caution this is an estimate because they don't give us a separate report our, our you know every this uh, the money we get for this comes in with the rest of the ADA the way we come up with these minutes is, is uh, attendance is coded separately in PIMS and we know about what a student gets um, uh, in ADA for one ADA for a year you divide that by the number of, of hours in a school year it works out to about six dollars an hour Total hours was 17,285 as of the date we ran this report last week. That's about $103,710. So if they stop funding it, that would be a, a loss that we have either have to cover other ways or not do it. Anybody else have any questions? Any questions from the public? Yes, ma'am. If you come up to the microphone, just uh, state your name and uh, ask your question of Mr. Fruchin. My name is Margaret Simmons, and my question is, if, uh, in your program, do you have an evaluator, al analyst, or just any person who does evaluation of your program, and do you have any type of pre-testing, post-testing, so we can see the move and the improvement of those students that you stated in that, and is it public information? Um, we don't have a, an external evaluator in the sense we haven't hired someone to do that. Now, the state has hired an external evaluator for the entire grant dropout grant program and then you produce a report every year that's 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 um, uh, open information um, we do turn in information on how we're doing to the state that's certainly uh, open to the public and that's one reason we do this report um, they also do pre and post testing using a standardized achievement test when all, uh, for every dropout student when they enroll and when they complete the program so there is pre post testing available at, at the campus we are uh, I might add, um, we're talking about two different funding sources. The dropout recovery grant is one funding source. We were one of about, I think, 21 school districts that got that original dropout recovery grant. When they went to cycle two of dropout recovery grant, we were only one of seven that got it because of the quality of the program. We were actually recognized, for instance, in Texas School Business as one of the top 10 programs. Um, but the OFSDP is a second funding source that works with at-risk kids different than the dropout recovery grant. So as far as criteria, certainly we, um, the state looks at criteria as far as graduation rate, so on, and they provide incentives for us as far as kids as they move uh, and are successful. And we've been highly successful, certainly as Dr. Fruge said, we haven't reached every kid we want to reach. Um, well, that, absolutely. Are there any other questions? I'd just like to add that I, I know for a fact that the program has grown and I commend the administrators of the program because last year I saw that um, the number this year of graduates increased and the criteria they must pass the tax in order to complete the program so uh, in last year and this year comments were made about the science giving them a fit uh, last year, one young lady said that she had taken that science test seven times, but she was determined. She was not going to get a GED, she wanted a diploma. And this year, someone said the same thing. So when they finish that program, they have a diploma, they have passed their tax test, and they're ready to go on to um, junior college or college or trade or whatever. So it's a wonderful program. I'm glad we have it. Do we have one more question? Slaughter, and I'm a future educator and also a member of the community uh, parent. I'm curious to find out is this program um, set up for evaluation of individual cases as far as, you know, is this one first for the option of some students and maybe better to go for GED than to go for the diploma, or is it, um, you know, do they? through counseling have advisement for that and and um, you know, is that something that uh, they take a look at 
I think I'm hearing your question is, is there some kind of assessment of what students might be appropriate for the program and what may be less appropriate? Is there a student that leaves there already with a diploma at high school and went to college, or if upon completion of this, uh, and this is what the grant is for? And then, uh, or is there also an option of some students that may be a better option to take the GED test? That's a good question. Um, and understand I'm going to answer some of these questions going out across the three different parts of that night school program. In the dropout program, the state uh, in, in the state's external evaluator, uh, Jobs for the Future, has broken students that are dropouts into roughly three categories for better understanding. There are students that are younger and far from graduation that probably would be doing best to stay in their, their day high school program. Now we have students that come over to accelerate that just want to finish faster uh, through the, 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 the night school program. But as far as dropouts go, the best thing to do when, uh, when you're, you're older and far from, or younger and far from graduation is to complete the regular high school program. If you're younger and close to graduation and just need to say pass one tax test or need some credits, we've been very successful with some of those students and, and bringing them back in and getting them through the program based on an individualized plan, that the, the, the individual um, uh, graduation plan that they do for every student there okay, as part of the, the individual intake and assessment. Students that are older and close to graduation, the program works pretty well for them. We've been very successful at that. It's students that may be in their, in their 20s uh, and have family responsibilities but just have a few credits or a tax test to pass. Students that are older and far from graduation, that's a tough road to go. And the, the external evaluator and, and the state, and really we've encouraged those students to go the GED route and go on to take uh, the, the, the higher education test. And, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Any other questions? Anybody else? Way back. Maybe you're scratching it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ferguson. Uh, it is a great program, and it, it's nothing better to go. And actually, we were at the uh, the graduation this past week, and they actually they had some of the alumni come back, which is a great great thing for the kids to see that are graduating. They come back and they tell their success stories because it's only this is our third year, and um, nothing is better for the teachers who work so hard in this program to see the kids come back and see how successful they've been, and uh, it just does a world of good for them, the parents, and the students. So it's, it, it's, a, it's one of our, I think, our prime uh, uh, programs, and I, I just I really appreciate it because it was a long time coming. So thank you all very much. If there are no other questions or comments from the board, we'll clo close the public hearing and move on to um, a call to order.